So previously, we created food which would spawn at a random position. Now we're going to make it so that when the player touches the food, the food is destroyed and the player's size increases slightly. So to achieve this, we're going to use one of the most commonly used functions in Unity, on trigger enter. We can use this to tell if two objects are colliding, but in order to use it, the player and the food bit must have a collider attached. So to do this, we select our player in the hierarchy and in the inspector, click add component physics sphere collider. Now we can adjust the properties of the collider. It is very important that you check is trigger, else all of the code won't work. This is because the on trigger enter function is only called on colliders that are triggers. Optionally, you can adjust the radius to something like 0.4. I did this so that the food actually has to go inside the player to be eaten. We must also remove the collider from the mesh object by clicking the cog, then remove component. We do this so the mesh won't interfere with the collision of the food. Now all the player collision is finished. We need to change the properties of the food by going to the prefabs folder, then selecting the food. Now, before we can do the collision, I'd like to make it so that the food's size is 0.3 on all the axes. I must have made a mistake in the previous episode. So for the collision of the food, all we need to do is add the sphere collider component. But we also need to add a rigid body component. This is so that the two objects can actually collide. Unfortunately, adding the rigid body will mean that the objects are affected by gravity. So to remove all the gravity and movement from the food object, simply check is kinematic. Finally, we're going to add a tag to the food object. This will be so that in code we can check that we're colliding with the food and not something else. To do this, select the tag in the inspector, then add tag. Now we can name this food, but you need to remember the word that you used for the tag later. Now we can apply the tag by selecting the food prefab, then selecting the food tag from the dropdown. Now we can begin writing the code that will check the collision between the player and the food. So in our scripts folder, create a new c -sharp script. Once that's been opened in your IDE of choice, likely monodevelop, we can delete the default function calls that Unity provides. We're going to create two variables. The first will store the tag that is assigned to the player. Because we want this to be seen in the inspector, we use the keyword public followed by the data type. Because this tag is text, we use the word string to denote the data type. The name I've chosen is tag. The next variable will store how much the player's size increases every time some food is eaten. This can be a public float, and I've chosen the name increase. Once those lines have been closed with a semicolon, we can begin using the on trigger enter function. As we know, this is called when two colliders touch and one of them is a trigger. So because this function does not return anything, we use the word void, followed by the text on trigger enter. Make sure to use the same capitalization and spelling as I have, else all the code we write won't work. Now this function actually does have a parameter, which is a collider. This is where the objects that we have collided with data is stored. So now we can set it by writing collider other, although the name you choose is up to you. So now whenever we write other, we're referring to any object that the player may have collided with. First, we need to check if that object has the food tag. So to do this, we're going to write if other dot game object dot tag, which refers to the tag on the object that the player has collided with. Then we use a conditional equal sign, which is just like two equal signs next to each other. Then we say is equal to the tag variable. So now in this if statement, we're going to need to increase the size of the player by writing transform dot local scale plus equals which will add whatever we write next to the player's scale. Now we're going to use a new vector3, which just uses the increase variable on all axes. Now we can destroy the food object by writing destroy with a capital D, then inside the parentheses other.gameObject, close parentheses semicolon. Now that's it, all our code is done. Now after saving it, we can jump back into Unity and we're going to drag the code onto our player. Now we need to set the tag variable text to food. 
make sure to use the same word and capitalization as you used for the tag you applied to the food prefab. I have found that an increase of 0.1 works perfectly. Now, when we run the game, we can see that the player can actually consume the food objects, and when the player eats it, its size increases. So thanks for watching guys. Please consider subscribing, as in the next episode, we'll make the player dynamically lose mass as time goes on. All the code and project files are available for download in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye!